I'm back. Well, technically, I've always been here, but the webcam is back. Honestly, I miss doing this. How are you guys? I miss you all. So I decided that today we're going to make this video where we basically do like a recap of Unity 2018 and take a look at a bunch of features that were released last year. And now that we are actually transitioning to Unity 2019, I thought that it would be a great idea for beginners who are just new to Unity and want to catch up on everything new from last year and also for intermediate developers who are just getting into Unity 2019 and still wanna have like a TLDR version of 2018. And I also want to mention that this video is brought to you all by Flu Joey, Richard Stance, Cupola, Build or Die, Make a Game, Becky Lade, Gilhermo Leandro, and Couch Ferret. Thanks to your support on Patreon, I'm able to make you guys more videos. The first blog post for Unity 2018.1 was introduced as they said this, quote, Unity 2018.1 marks the start of a new cycle that introduces a major upgrade to our core technology, which gives artists, developers, and engineers the power to express their talents and collaborate more efficiently to make their AAA dreams a reality. To start off the cycle, Unity introduced the brand new SRP, also called the Scriptable Render Pipeline. Now, SRP is an alternative to Unity's built-in render pipeline, and with the SRP, you can control and tailor rendering via c -sharp scripts. This way, you can either slightly modify or completely build and customize the render pipeline to your needs. The SRP gives you more granularity and customization options than the built-in Unity render pipeline, and to top it off, they actually grant you two templates to use with the SRP, one being the HDRP, or high-definition render pipeline, and the other being the lightweight render pipeline pipeline. HDRP is the one you should use if you're making games for desktop and consoles in mind as it enables more high quality options for your games whereas lightweight is kind of tailored for more mobile platforms enabling more performance. Both of these templates can be installed either when you create a new project so you can pick it from Unity Hub for instance or if you already have a project and want to use an SRP template there you can go to the package manager and install either the lightweight or the high definition template. Additionally 18.1 also introduced a brand new tool called ShaderGraph, which I think is the first official visual tool for Unity ever, which is pretty cool to think about. But basically, the ShaderGraph enables you to build your shaders visually. So instead of handwriting code, you create and connect nodes in a graph network. Now the graph framework gives instant feedback on the changes you make, and it's simple enough that new users can become involved in shader creation, like I did, because I hadn't created any shaders before, and I just got into it and could use the shader graph very easily. You can get started with the shader graph by using one of the scriptable render pipeline templates that Unity includes, as this currently only works with the HDRP or the lightweight render pipeline. I also have a full tutorial on the shader graph tool if you want to learn how to use it, so make sure to check it out through the link in the description. By the way, it seems like Unity is introducing more visual tools in 2019 too, and I just want to ask you guys, is this something you're looking forward to? Let me know in the comments because I'm really interested to hear if you guys are looking forward to this. Now we we also saw an older feature make a huge return in 2018.1, which was the progressive light mapper. Now the progressive light mapper offers great results for baked lights and improves the workflow for lighting artists, enabling them to iterate quickly and predictably by providing progressive updates in Unity. While originally released as a preview feature in version 5.6, which was a long time ago, it has been improved with more features in each subsequent release. And now in 2018.1, it finally came out of preview mode and included memory optimizations for baking large scenes. Now jumping forward just a little bit to late Unity 2018.3, we now have the GPU light mapper added as an option, which is way faster than the CPU progressive light mapper. Which light mapper solution you're using can be changed in the lighting settings. So you can go to window, rendering, and then lighting. And in there, you can change which light mapper you're using inside Unity. And making a quick hop back to 18.1, we also got the post-processing stack 2.0 released. The post-processing stack enables you to apply realistic filters to scenes using professional grade controls, and the artist-friendly interface makes it easy to create and fine-tune high-quality visuals for dramatic and realistic effect. It actually came out of preview in 18.1 and is now available in the package manager in Unity. There were also a few new 2D tools introduced in 18.1, which were the 2D sprite shape feature and the 2D animation tool. Sprite Shape is a sprite layout and world building tool that provides the ability to tile sprites along the path of a shape based on given angle ranges. Additionally, the shape can be filled with a tiling texture, and the main advantage of the Sprite Shape feature is the powerful 
powerful combination of a Bezier's blind path with the ability to tile sprites adaptively or continuously. And the 2D animation tool allows you to rig and animate 2D sprites in Unity, such as characters and creatures. It's very easy to use, and it's the first official tool in Unity to let us rig characters. Both of these new 2D tools are available in the package manager right now. They also integrated the popular tool ProBuilder into the engine, which used to be on the Unity Asset Store for quite some time actually. And the same thing was done to PolyBrush and PolyGrid, and as of then, they have been available on the package manager along with all of the other packages. Now, something that was huge to programmers is the C Sharp job system, which enables better overall performance, especially as new Unity features like the Entity Component System and the new Burst Compiler technology became available in 18.1. The goal of all these systems combined is to increase what is fundamentally possible in Unity in terms of performance while still supporting existing workflows and allowing for a smooth technical transition. Unity actually published a guide on how to use these three new very, very complex tools, I'm just saying. So I'm going to include a link to that in the description below. And I'm actually planning to make some tutorials on the c -sharp job system and the ECS or Entity Component System. So let me know in the comments if you guys would like that. And that's pretty much all 18.1 had to offer along with a bunch of bug fixes and patches and things like that. So I'm gonna have a link to the full blog post in the description if you guys want to check that. But now, 2018.1 was finished. <laughs> I was gonna say two was published, but I just said one, God damn it. As I was saying, 18.2 <laughs> was published and one of the goals for it has been to build on the scriptable render pipelines or SRPs in order to enable next level rendering. Another focused area on top of that has been for Unity to develop a range of features and improvements that will help us succeed in mobile platforms. In all honesty though, like 18.2 didn't introduce a bunch of new features like 18.2 point one did, relatively speaking, but it kind of just built upon those that were brought in through 18.1, I guess you could say. So features like the SRP, Shader Graph, and C Sharp Job System were heavily updated and patched as they were all preview packages back then. Some new features, however, included the 2D Pixel Perfect Camera component, which makes pixelated art in motion much more stable and look sharper, and the support for 2D hexagonal tile maps on top of the regular tile map system. And we we also got the SVG importer, which is basically added support for importing scalable vector graphics into Unity. And these are much more efficient than using regular textures as sprites because SVG files can be scaled up a lot immensely without losing their quality and sharpness. And yet they maintain their small file size. So if you wonder what it is, it's basically magic. There you go. Then further down the pipeline in Unity 2018.3, they published the support for isometric tile maps on top of hexagon and regular tile maps. There was also an advanced feature released in 18.2 called the Addressable Asset System. Now the Addressable Asset System makes it easier to manage all the things that make up your game, like prefabs, textures, materials, audio clips, animations, and so on. And as we all know, when projects grow, the number of assets increase too. And because of that reason, the Addressable Asset System provides an easy way to load assets by address, as they call it. So it basically has handles asset management overhead by simplifying content pack creation and deployment. Now, to be honest, while Unity 2018.2 was just kind of bug fixes, updates, and all that kind of stuff, on top of a few 2D features that were released, the subsequent 2018.3 release was an absolute game changer. The first change of 18.3 was to introduce one of the most requested features of all time, nested prefabs. And before this feature was implemented, you could only pick between creating large monolithic prefabs like buildings or more granular ones like pieces of furniture. However, it wasn't possible to do both, which kind of annoyed a lot of people. And now with the support for nesting prefabs, a large building can be made up of many smaller room prefabs, which in turn can be made up of multiple pieces of furniture, prefabs, and so on, right? So basically this allows you to build a larger hierarchy for one single prefab and keep the modularity. But nested prefabs isn't the only feature implemented. This was only a single feature of three features, which is a part of the parent feature. <laughs> so many features. God. But basically, here's the deal. There's a parent feature called Improved Prefab Workflows. The Improved Prefab Workflows contains the nested prefabs, which we just talked about, 
prefab variants and the prefab mode. A prefab variant inherits the objects and properties of the prefab it is a variant of, but at the same time, you have the possibility both to override those properties and to add additional components and game objects. This is similar to the concept of inheritance in object-oriented programming. And the prefab mode is like creating a brand new scene that only includes the prefab you're modifying. So this basically allows you to be completely isolated from all of the other objects in your scene as you modify the prefab you wish to modify. And Unity also implemented a new unified settings window, which is so awesome to use. I was waiting for it for so long. Like basically it incorporates all of these settings windows that were spread out in earlier versions of Unity and puts them in one single place. So you know how you had to go to like graphics and then go to input and you had to go to like different windows and whatnot. Now they're all in one single window. 18.3 also instituted the brand new updates to the terrain system, which are very exciting because as we all know, the old terrain system was quite, well, you know, old and rusty. So now they have a full team dedicated to just work on terrain. The new updates to the terrain system are actually already visible in 18.3 and above. So go ahead and download Unity if you guys want to check it out. And by the way, Saiku also has a full on guide and tutorial on the new terrain system if you guys want to check it out. Thank you so much for the promotion. Thank you. And Unity Hub was also released in its first initial version out of beta back in September. And if you guys haven't tried the Hub yet, make sure you do so because Unity will, it seems like Unity will pay a lot more attention to upgrade it this year apparently because of the roadmap. And essentially Unity Hub lets you have all of your Unity builds and your projects unified in one single place instead of having them spread across different folders on your PC. So you can also update and install new builds of Unity with Without losing a track of your project from the hub, which is really cool. And a feature that really excited me, along with a bunch of other people using Unity, almost literally everyone, the VFX graph or the visual effect graph, which was also published in preview with 2018.3. So this tool is currently only available in HDRP. I'm not really sure if they're gonna implement it to like the regular built-in render pipeline or whatever, but basically this enables you the option to make particles much more easily by using a nodal system, which is the standard visual solution to scripting, coding, and stuff like that. The same fundamentals are actually used in the Shader Graph tool as well. So if you're familiar with that, I'm sure you're gonna have an easy time getting started with this. And that's right, ladies and gentlemen. Saiku also has a tutorial on this feature. Oh my God. How many tutorials is this guy making? A lot. The answer is a lot. And the VFX graphs architecture also enables you to generate millions of particles on the GPU without compromising on performance, whereas the earlier system could allow up to thousands. And physics also received an overhaul in 18.3. And for those of you who don't really know the concept of this, basically Unity uses something called a physics solution by NVIDIA that is called PhysX. And they upgraded it from 3.3 to 3.4.2. And now the change might not sound very exciting to you as it's just like a subversion above what it used to be, but trust me, it's actually massive. For instance, when you had a fast traveling object that would, could be colliding with another object, it would often not detect the collision because of the high amount of velocity the object in motion had. Now you can pick to enable continuous speculative collision detection in the rigid body component of an object and it will be detected much more accurately. And there are actually many more changes to physics in Unity 20. 18.3 but and I'm also going to leave a link to the full details in the description because I don't really want to go through all of them just in one video. The programming language C Sharp was also updated to C Sharp 7.3 which brings the latest language features and reducing compilation time which I'm also going to link in the description by the way. TextMesh Pro is also now a verified package in 18.3 meaning you can find it in the package manager. It ships with a new highly optimized font generator that enables the generation of glyphs at runtime. There are also new light types such as disk area lights and line lights. And 18.3 also brings screen space reflections or SSR for Unity. And with this, you can enable reflection on every smooth surface, which improves your game's graphics. Project Tiny or Unity Tiny or Tiny Mode, so many names. Project Tiny is also available in preview with 2018.3, which allows you to make mobile and web-based games much more tinier in size, allowing for faster load up times. It's actually in the package manager right now if you want to try it. And that's right, Psycho 
also has a video on this. And finally, FPS Sample was also released with 18.3 last year in October, which is Unity's multiplayer first person shooter game. It's supposed to be a demonstration of what a small and experienced team can create in Unity, and also a feature set for people who just want to pick things apart and just implement them into their own games, I guess. That's pretty much the purpose of it. All right, there we go. So that was pretty much a recap of 2018, a 2018 recap, I think, yeah, for Unity. <laughs> so basically those were all the features, not all the features, well, all the features of 2018, but there were also some, you know, improvements and updates and bug fixes, patches and all that kind of stuff. So if you guys want to see that in full detail, click the link in the description because I'm going to leave a bunch of blog posts from Unity that include those details. So hopefully this video should be helpful for you guys to kind of catch up on what's actually been happening last year. If you guys didn't follow or live under a rock. <laughs> and on top of that, I also wanted to let you guys catch up so you can actually get started with 2019 easily because obviously I'm going to have a bunch of videos. So feel free to subscribe down below the video. If you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more like this one, make sure to give this one a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below the video so you stay up to tune for new content and don't miss out our new videos from 2019. Like I said, we're going to have a bunch of cool stuff coming up. So for every feature of Unity, we're going to obviously cover that in video format. And I'm also going to do some really cool stuff that you guys already enjoy, such as level design, tips and tricks, Unity beginner's guide and all that kind of stuff. Oh, and also we have a Discord server for those of you who didn't actually know we're we're reaching around 10,000, I never know the number. Hold on, this time I'm actually gonna check. 9,366 members, not even close. <laughs> well, actually, close enough, isn't it? But yeah, we're basically all like-minded game developers who like to chat, have fun, meme, a bunch of memes, just saying. Yeah, overall, we're just having a bunch of fun, except for me. So if you guys wanna join and become a part of the community, you're more than welcome to do so, and you can do so by clicking the link in the description or in the pinned comments saying Discord. Now, with that being said, I'm going to be super active in the comment section of this video and respond to every single comment you guys post. This is a promise that I never keep, but I will, I will. This time I am going to, in my defense. And last time around, I actually promised you guys that I would buy you guys a cookie if you did join, so here it is. I did buy you a cookie and I gave you one in Discord, but a lot of people didn't seem to appreciate it still. Yo, this is actually good. There's some Swedish cookies, by the way, and no, not sponsored. I wish, I wish they did sponsor me, but no. And this time around, if you guys join, I'll buy you a coffee. Is there a deal? Anyway, hope to see you guys there, so thanks watching until next time peace out guys do i wanna if this feeling flows both ways at sea